Hello everybody, I hope you are doing super well today. I am excited because I'm coming here today to talk to you about a brand new bagpipe chanter that was just released the other day, and it's my first time talking about it here on YouTube, so I wanted to do that in a long form video. So before we get into what this chanter is and what it offers, I need to give you a little crash course into bagpipe key. It's complicated, so strap in and let's just get started. The first thing that you have to know is a couple of numbers, and that is across the board, this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with bagpipes, this is just pitch in general, and that is that the concert pitch B flat when you play it on the piano, that tunes to the number 466 hertz. We're talking about hertz here. Then when you look at the pitch B natural, which is a half step above that, that number right there tunes to the pitch 496. So the reason bagpipes are so unique is because a standard bagpipe chanter, the ones that I competed with solo and in bands, tune in between those two pitches. So it doesn't tune to concert pitch at all. This chanter right here, my McClellan solo chanter, tunes to the number 478. That's where it's really comfortable. So again, that's in between B flat and B natural. So if I played this with a piano, it wouldn't sound very good. Um, as you may know from seeing my content before, I play a lot with other instruments. Um, and so I actually have to use different chanters than these to be able to play with those instruments, and I'm gonna get into that today. One chanter that I did have is the G1 B flat chanter. So this one here tunes a little bit flatter than a standard bagpipe chanter, and our low A tunes to the pitch B flat as concert instruments are tuned. So again, 466. So this is a chanter that has already existed, and you can put into your bagpipe and play with other instruments as long as they're in the key of B flat. So there are still a lot of limitations. You can't take any of these chanters and play any scale you want like you can on a clarinet or a sax or a piano. It doesn't quite work like that. We've got a total of nine notes that we can play and they're all within that key of B flat mixolydian or E flat. So that's all we've got to work with. Um, there is another chanter that exists. It is an A pitch chanter. So your A will tune to the pitch A440, so a concert pitch A like on a piano. That exists as well, I do not have one, um, but those right now, um, or those before right now, were the only two chanters that you could put into a bagpipe in order to play concert pitch. With those two chanters, you would need to make special modifications to the drones, the little pipes that sit on your shoulder, so that they could tune flat enough to be able to match you in that key. They're called drone extenders. So you would need special reeds for those chanters and special drones for those chanters in order to play in those keys. So that is just something to consider with B flat and A as well. When I started playing a lot of content and adding bagpipes to modern music, I noticed that I was going to very quickly run out of things to play if the only key that I could play in was B flat. So I actually took one of G1's other chanters, the PT Sharp, and I carved the holes out <laughs> and tried to make it really, really sharp. And I did it. I also got a reed that was really, really easy. And I carved it down, made it easier, put that in there. And I got this chanter, which is not supposed to. I got this chanter to tune to 496. And that, at that stage, was the first time, as far as I or anybody I've talked to knows, was the first time that a bagpipe was able to tune consistently at 496. This wasn't perfect. <laughs> this was not perfect. My low G would often be flat, and it's really, really hard to uh, get a reed set up in this instrument right here in this chanter. I actually was on Melinda's tour, if you're familiar with my work with Melinda, and uh, I broke my reed right before our show, and I had to set up a new reed backstage, and I have never been more stressed in my entire life. So that was something that was kind of difficult. This is also the chanter that I played, that I recorded my album on, and that I recorded the solo in The Drunken Sailor on. So, we've been hearing bagpipes in 496 for a while from me, 
but that has not been something until now that was available to all other bagpipers. G1 officially has made a concert B natural pitch chanter that anybody can use. This is great because you're able to play in a lot more keys using this. You're able to play with a lot more instrumentalists using this and not have to kind of make them change everything that they're doing. It's a lot more difficult to walk up to a band and say, I know you've been playing this in B, but can you guys modulate down a half step? All of you <laughs> move your pitch down a half step so I can play with you than it is to take a chanter put it into your bagpipe, play the exact same things, and have it be in tune with that song you're trying to play with. So I just want to go over really quickly what keys now bagpipes in total can play in. I don't have one, but if you're playing on an A pitch chanter, you can now play in the key of A mixolydian, D major, and B minor. So those are your three keys without any modifications that you can play in. On the B flat chanter, you can play in B flat mixolydian, E flat major, and C natural minor. So those are the three keys that you can work on with this chanter. And now without any modifications, we have three more that you can do. We have B mixolydian, E major, which is one that I play in a lot, and C sharp minor, which is what the drunken sailor was recorded in. So without modification, we have three additional keys that you can play in. On the bagpipes, with the right reed setup, you can play some natural fingerings. So the two natural fingerings that we've always been able to play with the right setup and the right maintenance is C natural and F natural. So with those, you can now play in A major on the B chanter, you can play in D major on the B chanter, and you can play in B minor on the B chanter. So everything that you can do on the A chanter you can do on the B chanter with some slight modifications. Something else that this chanter in particular offers that I've never had happen before on a Highland bagpipe is the ability to play a leading tone. A leading tone is the seventh scale degree. Usually in a major scale when you're playing on the piano, your seventh scale degree is a half step below your top note of the scale. That's what gives it that T do, that resolution. Bagpipes are in the key of mixolydian, which means that that leading tone is actually flattened. Tado, and we don't have that leading tone. On this chanter, though, we do. You can play your regular scale, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, te, do, or you can add the leading tone with this false fingering here, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, te, do, uh, which is very exciting. Or do, re, mi, fa, so, la, te, ti, do. You can do like a little combination, it's very exciting. So I'm gonna do some demos of that, um, but that gives you an idea of some of the variety that you have now using a concert B chanter. If you head to g1reads.com, you can pick up a B chanter just on its own or as a plug and play option, which comes with a read set up and tuned. And you can actually get that for 10% off using the code Piper Alley. So that is the B chanter. Another benefit is that you don't need those special drone extenders to be able to play it. So you can use this with your regular bagpipe setup, plug it in and play in concert pitch with other instruments. That is it for this video. I hope you guys learned something today. If you do have any additional questions, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you next time.